In aviation, every flight begins and ends on the ground, and the implications are obvious. Weather can affect runway conditions any time of the year, and pilots must always be aware of this fact before every takeoff and landing. Before flying to an airstrip that you haven't visited recently, call ahead to check on the runway conditions. If it's grass or gravel, conditions can be uncertain at the best of times, but more so in the spring due to rain and ground thaws. Before starting your aircraft at your departure point, perform a physical check of the full length of the runway. Wet and soft areas increase drag and reduce the acceleration required for takeoff speed. And when you can't achieve the same acceleration rate, keep in mind that you won't get the same braking action in the event of an aborted takeoff. So always leave extra room for stopping on wet, slippery grass. Under any conditions, gravel and grass surfaces will increase drag and slow down acceleration. On a paved runway, standing water can cause hydroplaning and create directional problems on landing. Water will increase the acceleration and stopping distance as well. All of these variables should be part of your takeoff calculations, which may decrease your maximum gross weight, increase your accelerate stop distance, and increase your takeoff distance in considering the length of the runway. Keep in mind that accelerate stop distances, landing distances, and crosswind limitations contained in your pilot's operating handbook are based on a bare, dry, concrete runway. So a change in these conditions means a change in the calculations. As good as they are, performance charts do not cover all possible scenarios. Pilots should be aware of the limitations and compensate accordingly. Make sure that you know the runway surface conditions at your point of departure and your destination.